Welcome to this NEC Front Row Postseason Hoop Special, NEC Pride Moon Magic. I'm Ralph Ventry. I'll be your host for the show. When Robert Morris and Kentucky met to open play in the National Invitational Tournament back on March 19th, there was an abundance of emotion, passion, and pride throughout the Robert Morris University community. That emotion, that excitement, it began building right from the very moment that the matchup was announced on Sunday night, and it certainly continued in the hours leading up to the matchup and throughout that magical Tuesday night in Moon. Moon Township and the Charles Sewell Center, though, they weren't the only places beaming with NEC pride in the hours leading up to the matchup and during the actual game itself. As a matter of fact, that NEC pride was widespread throughout the conference's geographic footprint. There were athletes, fans, alumni from all 12 of the NEC's member institutions that were sharing their, t- their thoughts, their tweets, their Facebook posts throughout social media. They were sharing their congratulations and their excitement about Robert Morris, Kentucky, and postseason basketball. It was truly a night, a day, two days, hours of NEC pride. In this special, we're going to take you back to that magical night in Moon, and we're going to show you what NEC pride is all about. Enjoy NEC pride, Moon magic. It started on Sunday night, Selection Sunday. No, the Robert Morris Colonials, who bowed out in the semifinals of the Northeast Conference Tournament, were not going to the big dance. And as it turned out, neither was defending NCAA champion Kentucky. No, Andy Tools Colonials, the NEC's regular season champs, and John Calipari's Wildcats out of the Southeastern Conference were headed to the National Invitational Tournament, a long-standing postseason tradition. As we found out when the brackets were released, Kentucky would be the number one national seed in the NIT, and their first-round opponent, well, the number eight Robert Morris Colonials. One little caveat to the matchup, however, It wasn't going to be in Lexington. No, they were going to square off in Moon Township. Yes, folks, the Colonial Crazies would have one more, one final chance to pack the chuck in 2013. Of course, the social media buzz began building with the Colonial Crazies themselves, but it quickly went from that fan group in western Pennsylvania to places like Smithfield, Rhode Island, home of Bryant, down to Mount St. Mary's in Maryland, and even ordinary Joes from Texas, Washington State, non-NEC cities, they were chiming in about this matchup, about the Kentucky Wildcats coming in to a Northeast Conference venue for postseason play. As tip-off neared, news leaked that ESPN would be doing a pre-game remote from within the Sewell Center on their Sports Center show. Of course, fans wanted to be a part of the action and wanted to be in front of those cameras for the sports flagship. They began filing in and literally began to pack the chuck. The fans' excitement and enthusiasm definitely did not go unnoticed. In fact, it turned some heads around the NEC and around the nation. Folks were impressed about this excitement, about this frenzy building out on the Robert Morris campus. display, they would certainly be impressed on what would transpire on the basketball court. Clearly feeding off of the crowd, 
and the awesome opportunity in front of them, the Robert Morris Colonials came out like gangbusters. Before Big Blue Nation could even bat an eyelash, it was Robert Morris 10 and Kentucky nothing. RMU would hold the lead and would be in control for most of the night. Kentucky would only be up by a point on two occasions over Robert Morris, the last being 27-46 late in the first half. It was the Colonials with the 28-27 lead heading into the locker room. Robert Morris opened the second half just as they did the first. High intensity, high energy, and results. The Colonials went on a 12-4 run. On three consecutive trips down the floor, it was the grizzled veteran, Belton Jones, hitting three straight jump shots. The one-point lead grew to a 10-point bulge. Kentucky would keep the Colonials within arm's length, though, as you would expect a national power to do. Coach Calipari's team pulled even with the Colonials down the stretch on two occasions, but never led in the second half. As the moments ticked away and crunch time became real time, Robert Morris did not back down. tied at 53-53. Well, Belton Jones went immediately down the floor, drew the foul, and hit two great free throws. And big play Belton Jones wasn't done yet. The floor general finding Mike McFadden for the flush as Robert Morris takes the 57-53 lead with under two to go in the ballgame. Kentucky would tie the game again. With 42 seconds left, the highly touted Archie Goodwin went to the basket for the layup, tying the score at 57. But the Colonials would have the ball on their home floor with a chance to make Northeast Conference history. It was on that possession that Robert Morris head coach Andy Toole, to the dismay of the announcers on ESPN, was directing guard Belton Jones into the corner. When Jones was in position, he told his point guard to call for timeout. A 30-second T.O. But what were the Colonials doing? Well, Andy Toole had a plan. As it turns out, the young head coach drew up quite the inbounds play, and Russell Johnson was wide open for a look underneath. Johnson missed but big Mike McFadden was there to clean up the rebound. The putback just rolled out off the rim, but McFadden would have the two biggest free throws of his collegiate career to follow. He'll flip it. He'll bend after bouncing. And it is good! Robert Morris takes a 59-57 lead. Kentucky in a hurry up the floor now. Here's Polson over to the left side to Mays. Mays sends it back to Wiltshire. Three-point shot. Back to Robert Morris pulls the upset and they win the ball game. Just as furious as the reaction in the arena itself <laughs> was the reaction throughout social media. Players from the rival LIU Brooklyn Blackbirds were congratulating the Colonials on their feet. As a matter of fact, LIU alum Kyle Johnson, who played for Team England in the last Olympics, had quite a nice tweet right here. Then, of course, there were guys like FDU alum John Galvin and others to chime in. As the celebration transpired and the tweets rained down, the magnitude of the victory started to sink in. It became quite evident that this was a huge night for not only Robert Morris, but the Northeast Conference too. Wow, uh, what a night that was. It's, it's certainly a night that I'll never forget and, and the, high, the highlight of my, my time here at the NEC. Uh, when that final shot from UK uh, hit iron and came down and towards Velton Jones, you could 
you know, you immediately you sense the, 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 the monumental nature of the win and what it meant to the conference itself, to the players, to the coaches, and not just to the ones in that arena, but to people all over the conference. And as a single unifying event, I've never seen anything of this magnitude, uh, the well wishes and the support from uh, the uh, fellow players in the conference and fans and coaches alike. It, it, was, it, was, it was tremendous and um, um, something that I will definitely hold dear uh, to my heart. This year, the NEC has been focusing on the concept of NEC pride and the messaging that we've used throughout the year is to, to deliver that concept uh, throughout all of our campuses from a student athletes, coaches, uh, alumni, and this event, the win, Robert Morris over Kentucky, was a perfect opportunity for us to demonstrate how much that NEC Pride message has taken off around the conference. Um, you know, prior to the game, there was all sorts of tweets and email messaging back and forth um, between student athletes and coaches. Uh, and then after the final whistle, when the students stormed the court, uh, the tweets just started coming. Uh, student athletes supporting student athletes and, and emails between presidents and presidents and coaches and coaches. It's been fabulous. It's a great way to bring the NEC together. And this win has been a, a perfect example of how we've been able to grow NEC pride. Truly, this was a night that not only Robert Mars could enjoy, but the entire Northeast Conference. It was NEC Prime.